Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio, where we have impactful guests doing impactful things in the world, and today is no different. With me today is an amazing woman, Laura Sprague. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome to you, Sean. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm pretty excited. I am so super pumped. So I was on your show, uh, Life in Purple, your podcast, and I think we knocked it out of the park. High energy, like high octane. We were just on the ball on that one. I loved it. Um, and we're going to create some magic today. Absolutely. I, I agree with you so much. It was like super high energy, and I really challenge everybody to go and listen to that because you gave some really valuable nuggets for people, um, and so I think they need to go listen to it too, but you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, so are you. So Life Transformation Radio is live every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and then every first and third Friday, same time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So if you're listening, those are the times. You can go back to iTunes. We're on iTunes and Stitcher. Go back and check out some of the past episodes. But today we're going to talk about life in purple and living your best life designed by amazing people. So let's learn more about Laura. Laura Sprague is an entrepreneur, coach, Life and Purple podcast host, speaker, wife, and mother. Her journey started very young with deep love and appreciation for music. Following her passion, she pursued a music degree and started her own business, mentoring and teaching others how to write music along with the voice and piano. Starting with the first student at her home, it quickly grew into a full-time career with 40-plus students. Although Laura finally achieved success, her past haunted and weighed her down. She was the victim of child molestation for years, starting at the age of five, and became filled with anger, fear, and shame. Laura realized no matter how much you try to move forward, until you deal with the past, you can never fully be the person you want to be or who God created you to be. Clinically diagnosed with manic depression, Laura went on a self-education journey using scripture, personal development, and mentors to find real answers and skill sets. Empowered and armed with the right tools, she now enjoys success principles that help your personal and professional life. As her past fell away, the future became brighter, and she felt compelled to go on a mission to share what she's learned, helping others who have also been victimized. Laura is a poster child for what the power of the mind can do and has developed a unique outlook on life by not allowing her dark past to dictate the future, but instead to eliminate or to illuminate her path. Her experiences have given her the ability to remain transparent and reach out through communication, music, love, and empathy to deliver a message of hope. Her clients learn to understand their value and realize how to use their gifts and talents instead of suppressing and ignoring them. Today, she collaborates with many top entrepreneurs and professionals nationwide. Laura enjoys a life that brings joy and endless possibilities, a life she knows in her deepest soul God had designed for her. You can learn more about her, listen to podcasts, uh, see everything that she is doing at liptalknation.com. The website's in the show notes. Laura, I know from experience you are absolutely (laughs) killing it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm just getting a lot of goosebumps right here just with what you were with sharing about me. I'm like listening to you and I'm like, oh my goodness, that really is me. And I'm like, oh, I got all this feeling because I love helping people so much. It's like I almost forget um, just what I have done. I just keep moving forward. So I really appreciate that introduction. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. And if anybody listening wants to call in and has a legitimate question for Laura or myself. And I have to throw that out there, like a legitimate question, because some people get weird <laughs> things, callers, and it's really weird. Um, yeah. 
But, yeah, if, if you have, like, a serious question, because I screen all the calls, um, if you have a serious question, call in. Don't hesitate. Myself or Laura can help you if you struggle with something. I'd love to hear from you. And um, the number is 657-383-1109. Again, 657 657- Three eight three one one zero nine to call into the show and talk to myself or Laura. Uh, tell us what's going on. So, the first question we always start off with here on Life Transformation Radio is your why. I think it's a very, very important question that you have to ask yourself. Why am I doing this? When we go through hard times, we always say, "Why did they do that to me? I, I, w- I was so in tune with that person, or we were in a bad breakup. Like, why did this happen? Or something like." You know, something in our personal life, we have a family member who is sick or whatever. It's like, why? Right? Fascinating right. to me about people's why. So what is your why? Why did you decide to do what you do? Sean, that is such a loaded question for me because I could probably spend <laughs> 10 hours just really sharing with you and in your audience on what my why is. But I'm going to really try to narrow it down for people to understand where I'm coming from. Oh. You see, I'm an advocate of cheering people on. That's what I do. So my why, you know, starts with me, myself first, you know, because it starts with personal development and then able to pass that on. But my why is to seriously hone in on someone that I can help them create emotional resilience for them, both spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. I believe all of those should line up because once you free your mind of suppression, you free your mind for innovation. And so I have this unique approach where I can help people do that. So my why is literally, it is not cliche. You can find it cliche, but it is literally to bring out the best version of themselves. That is awesome, and I and, and I'm sitting over here like yay, because you know me, like I'm the resilience <laughs> yeah, guy, yeah, you know, right? Like, I know teaching all that stuff, and I'm like yes, <laughs> yeah, I know we definitely it. line up, yeah, in our yeah. philosophy and oh, yeah. our in our uh, mindset trainings. I know that's why I think why we hit it off um, oh, in our absolutely. interview on life from purple. So yeah, that's my why yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, oh, that's that's amazing. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing it. So yeah. we have to go back, right? So let's right. go back a few years. Like, who was Laura before you got into the resilience game and, and, yeah. and speaking in the podcast, like pre-podcast, pre-lip talk nation? Like, all, like, like, who is she? What is she doing? What is she thinking? All right. So I want people to – I want to paint a clear picture for people. Mm-hmm. I was this person. Clearly, I have energy. It is a gift. I accept it. Okay? But here am I. I've been diagnosed with you know, being bipolar, clinically depressed, manic depressive, and all kinds of weird things going on in my mind. But I still had energy. It's just I honed, my energy was not – used correctly. So I was a person who sat in my house, literally, literally sitting in my house, hoping I'd be discovered. Literally. I'm Mm. I'm sitting and I'm playing the piano. No one can hear me except my kids, my toddlers at the time, not even my husband. I wouldn't even play in front of him. And I play for my students and I'm teaching them, but I am literally sitting there wanting to be a speaker. I'm wanting to be a musician. I'm wanting to to do all those things. I did not have the right tools to take action on that and that's why I'm a huge fan on on getting people to go from A to B you know because I know what it's like for too long for over 18 years just to sit in my chair and want just want I just want to do something, sure. but I didn't take action. So that was me. I mean, I, I, of course, you know, no one knew I was, suffered from depression. I hid that very well, um, but I just stayed in my house. So it was easy to hide it and thus I went mm-hmm. out. So I was that person that just um, wanted to, and I hoped I was going to be discovered in my living room. So there you go. That was me. It, it, isn't it amazing? And we talked about this a, a little bit. We, we kind of grazed mm-hmm. the topic. Isn't it amazing what people deal with and carry around and they mm-hmm. mask it so well. Oh yeah. my gosh. Especially those with um, depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, multiple personality, you know, mental disorders, because I believe they're very highly intelligent, only feeding the wrong information to their brain. And that's really, I, I discovered when I discovered that I could switch the information, I was like, Whoa, wait a second. Then I could start taking action, and that's what I believe people can do as well. It's just all about the information that they're feeding their brain. So you're right. Right. It really is that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Uh, yeah, because I used to do the same thing. You know, I, I was an alcoholic, and I was like, well, nobody mm. will notice. And, you know, I right? do everything to mask what I'm going through, you know. But, you know, you know eventually it, it boils yeah. over. Mm-hmm. 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 Absolutely. So looking back, right, we were looking back. Mm-hmm. Can you pinpoint exactly what your transformation was or, or how you think um, – or, or actually a better question. So so what exactly was your transformation and what was the moment that you knew like, okay, this is enough and I'm going to change or something needs to change? How did that happen? Sean, four and a half years ago, I was living in my PJs five days a week. I was mad at the world. I was mad and upset that my husband got to go to work and I had to stay home. You see, I was feeding the wrong information to my mm-hmm. brain, but it was lunchtime. Mm-hmm. My 17 month old in the high chair, I'm feeding my kids and I went to get my son out of the high chair. He's 17 months old and I went to get him. Sean, my body locked up on me, my back. The, the lowest part oh. of my back locked. Like I bent over, you know, cause you have to use a little bit mm-hmm. because of the angle. I'm picking him up. And I couldn't get him out of the chair. I started crying. My three-year-old at the time, my daughter, she went and got my phone. I'm very thankful that she could. And I had to call my husband who worked an hour away. And I told him, I said, I can't get our son out of the high chair. And he had to climb out. Thank God he could because he's a climber. But that moment right there, I was almost enough. Because then my husband had to drive an hour home to come take me to the right. chiropractor to, you know, to help out because he really didn't know how to help me because I wasn't being honest with myself. So it's really hard for someone to help you when you're not honest with yourself. However, Sean, right. that defining moment, I had a friend uh, that I met before I moved to Florida because that's where I live now about about six weeks or seven weeks before I moved to Florida, I met a friend. She's a lifelong friend. I believe we're soulmates, soul sisters. She (laughs) called me all the time and checked on me. And I wasn't going to reach out to anybody, by the way, and tell them that my body locked up on me. But she called me the next day and I told her what happened. And she said, Laura, don't you think it's time to take care of you? And that was the defining moment. That right there, that question, no one has ever asked me that question. And that was the moment where I knew that I, that I needed to get better mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So that was my moment when my son, 17 months old, my body locked up on me because your body's your tall tale sign. And Mm -hmm. um, I had to listen. So that was my defining moment when I knew I needed to do something. And and so you took action. You pursued that music degree. Right. Well, built a business. Right. right. Well, let, you see, I had that already before my music degree, okay. and I, I built the business, sure. and that was while I, you know, my had kids um, when I lived in Kentucky, and I, I was at an, a point where I just didn't know who I was anymore. I, I didn't like. Am I supposed to keep on teaching? What I did though, in that defining moment, I realized that, you know, also this friend, um, she told me about personal development and for a while I kind of blew her off even though she was the one who said don't you think it's time to take care of yourself she's like Mm -hmm. nutritionally you need something because your body is just in pain and so I eventually gave in to Jim Rohn you know listening to some Jim (laughs) Rohn on YouTube right and he was contagious you know and I just one thing after another and I couldn't get enough of it. And so I spent hours listening to Jim Rohn and Les Brown and Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell. And there's so many more that I was listening to, but that right there, as I'm taking really good nutritional supplements and feeding the right information to my brain, I began to free my mind of that suppression from my dark days, you know, or my past. And you mentioned that I, um, you know, I'm a a victim and now I'm going to say I'm a survivor of sexual abuse. So it was that it was my past that was haunting me and giving me and lying to me. I was lying to myself. And so that Mm -hmm. right there has has allowed me to just redefine myself, reintroduce myself to myself because I'm no longer a slave to fear. So that right there, defining moment four and a half (laughs) years ago. That is, an amazing story. Like, yeah. Holy crap. It like, locks up. Yeah. It you know, locked, and, 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 and you feel helpless. I was helpless. And, and it not only locked, but I was in pain. Like it was high pain, almost like labor pain. Mm. I was in, I, I, oh, yeah. And you know, wow. No one wants to live in pain. Right. So when right. are you going to start listening to your body? And I knew that it was doing some weird things already, 
but I was mm-hmm. mad. You know, it's I'm mad, so you don't do anything when you're mad. You just want to be mad. <laughs> and <laughs> so, yep. yeah, I know that you know exactly, especially, you know, for what you've overcome. And so it's just really having that right piece of information. Don't you think it's time to take care of yourself? Don't oh, you think? absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. And and you know what? You said something that, that really kind of plugged on my heartstrings a little bit because mm. I know – exactly what it feels like and you said that you were at a point where you were questioning you you were questioning mm. like like should I be doing this should I not and you were questioning kind of like your purpose and everything and and you're like what do, what do I do How, oh my gosh I know exactly what that feels like and that is not a great feeling that sucks Mm-mm. it does suck <laughs> you feel lost you feel yes. lost you lost and, and stuck and I'm mm-hmm. um, confused and, you know, that's just, it's, it's not a very, um, uh, if, if you allow yourself, you can live there. And you're very miserable. Oh, my gosh. And people plant mailboxes, and they mm-hmm. put an address up there. Don't and they say. say, I'm living in this state. Well, it's contagious. Yep. Negativity is mm-hmm. contagious. And, and it's an addiction, I believe. And so, yeah. If somebody, Absolutely. yes, you need hope. And I had a friend who offered hope, and I was like, I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so tell me. So what was the best part about your entire journey, like like your whole transformation into who you've become? What was the best part about it? The best part, I think, um, it's so hard really to narrow it down to really one thing, mm-hmm. but the best part is, is my children can't get enough of me now. I oh. am I am in awe with that. I, I mean, literally, they would be on my lap if I would let them right now during the interview. But they want to do life in purple. They want to help people with their mindset. And they're seven and five. And they, when daddy comes home, they still are the ones that come and sit on my lap. They're just in love with whatever is coming out of me, you know, um, because I, I want them to, to teach others, treat others the way you want to be treated. And so that's... Mm-hmm. And um, my daughter will just walk up to someone in a store, randomly say, I think you look beautiful like a red diamond, or I think you look beautiful like a red rainbow. And she's just full of love, my daughter is, uh, Sydney. And Christian, he just loves to make people laugh. So I think that's the transformation. Like, that's huge for me and watching my husband support me. And then I've always wanted friends, Sean, when I was growing up, and I prayed for them, and I felt like I never got them. And so I feel like now... It is, I am in an abundance of friends and I, that overwhelms me. So that, I would say those are my two things. My kids just really in love with what I do. I know. And then my friends, the support is just crazy awesome when you um, stop lying to yourself. That is, oh my gosh, I got <laughs> goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I'm looking yeah. at my kids and like, oh, my yeah. kids, you know, like, mm-hmm. right? I don't know. So what's yeah. the worst part about it then? Like there's always has to be there's always okay. you know a downside. There's always two sides to every story. So what do you think is the worst part about it all? Okay, so there is a detox that comes with this when mm. you go through emotional resilience training. When you go through even eating right, um, changing your mindset, there is a detox because with anything that you decide, there will be resistance. John Maxwell will tell you that. Zig Ziglar, all the greats will tell you that when you decide to do something, there will be resistance. And let me tell you, I felt resistance. I don't know if you um, can relate a little bit to this, Sean, but when you start something and you know and you know and you know that this is going to work you know helping others is your calling not everybody responded right away in the manner of which I thought would and so that had been the biggest challenge when I would get somebody telling me about their past and saying hey me too and then they didn't want to talk to me like they stopped talking to me as if they told me some guilty thing and um, so that's been the hardest thing is helping others get over the false guilt so um, I just Mm. think that's such a taboo topic to talk about sexual abuse and domestic violence and alcoholism and and it's taboo and we need to talk about these things so that we can provide hope to others instead of sweep it under the rug so and that has been the hardest Nailed one it. <laughs> right you know it just it's that's just been the really hardest thing and i think that always will be when you lead a volunteer army but um if you keep on going the pendulum uh, darren hardy would say would shift the pendulum will shift mm-hmm. if you keep on going. So that's been the most difficult thing to go through. Boom. Mm-hmm. 
I yeah. love it. Boom. <laughs> so let's so let's talk let's talk about influences because I, I I feel like and and in, in all the interviews that I've done and people that I've mm-hmm. talked to, it, it's so hard to do it alone. Oh, oh my, my gosh! Goodness. Like. We're our own worst enemy, you know. We we, we really are. We think things and feel things that that aren't even there, and it's like, why am I doing this to myself? But we have to have somebody there, and I call it building your board of directors. Like you have to have a personal board of directors yes. for your life. And and I feel yes. like God is my number one at the head of the table. You know absolutely. what I mean? So oh, absolutely. So yeah. So let's talk about that. You know, has God played a role in your life? Oh, my goodness. I'm starting to sweat right here because, you know, he and I, we've always been close. You know, I I became a Christian um, at the age of five. I was young and and really was living by the rules. I wanted to please everybody, but I loved God. And I didn't really have that close, intimate relationship with him until I decided, you know, half years ago to taking care of myself because I spent a lot of time being mad at him. Now, I always talked to him, but I was mad at him, you know, at my circumstances. And I quickly realized when I started feeding the right information to my brain that it wasn't about my circumstances. It was about who I needed to become to get where I wanted to go. Um, That's a Jim Rohn quote. He would ask that question. And so I really think that um, God has played a significant role role in my life. I would not be where I am because he's the whole time I've been trying to pull me along. He's given me this calling. He's given you this calling, Sean, and he's given so many people this calling to be them, to be unique and wonderfully made. And we all have these talents. And so he has really, I believe, ordained me in a very unique way as far as to to relate with others. So Sean, if you're going to tell me about you know, your story off the air, I'm probably going to cry with you, you know, or laugh with you. Like I have people come over to my house and I literally will cry my eyes out with you. I promise I'll do that. Like that's a thing. And so I feel like God has given me that true gift of empathy to feel what others feel. And so God clearly has been the biggest influence in my life along (laughs) with, you know, some of the people I've got to interview worldwide, um, and just watching them and with, um, the um one of my guys that i interviewed he's uh Stephen Aitchison he's from Scotland um he's got okay. like over 2 million followers and he agreed and he was Whoa. I'm like i know right super sweaty and and he just had the sweetest voice and kindest soul and he was the one who taught me that affirmations because i'm a huge fan of positive affirmations but he said the reason why yes. we do it is because it affects our belief system you don't say oh, them yeah. because you believe them. You say them to believe them. But the way he explained right. it had really been, and I don't even know. I, I mean, I've, I've written him and told him that, but I, I want to repay him in some way, you know, just for that influence in my life. And then, you know, keep on going with um, Jamie Vrinios. She's one of the top earners in Mary Kay. And her mm-hmm. her philosophy is you have to have zero doubt, zero doubt. So that's been a huge um, influence in my life. And, uh, and the list continues to go on and on. I've mm-hmm. had friends who cheer me on, on a daily basis. Do you have that? Like, how cool is that? Oh, yeah. Sean, right. Who will cheer you on? Let me journal out loud. And so, um, I yep. have a very tight knit tribe who will, yeah, who's influenced me in a way to really uh, you know, let, let me put it this way, Sean, they are the ones, I have a group of people that told me that I would be selfish if I didn't share what God had given me. And, and that was a huge perspective paradigm shift for me. Like I was being selfish and I'm like, Oh, I don't want to be selfish. Cause that's a rule. That's a bad rule. <laughs> I don't want to be that. So, um, just really allowing yourself daily to fall into the calling that God has given you. So I've had a lot of, a lot of really cool influences. Shad Helmstetter also, he's here in Milton. He wrote the book, um, what to say when you talk to yourself. And he was the one that said that you can rebuild neuroplasticity in your brain, meaning you can go from negative to positive. You can restructure it scientifically and uh, talked about cognitive dissonance, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, and here's a really interesting thing that he taught me was motivation cannot be stored in the brain. Your brain has zero ability to store it. However, Jim Rohn would say the only kind of motivation is self-motivation. Yes. And so we'll talk about that later, but, um, I am developing a method to help people be self-motivated. So I got a long list, John. Yeah, you're awesome, too. And I really learned from you, you know, with the thankfulness and the gratefulness and and the things that you're doing is really awesome, too. So I really appreciate it. Wow. Thank you so much. (laughs) And, And 
And, and we both agree, you know, and, and we had mentioned this before, that the neuroplasticity oh, mm-hmm. is so huge in the resilience mm-hmm. world. I mean, it is so huge. Yeah. You know, and, and it's all the learned behavior. Negative behaviors and positive uh, behaviors, yes. habits are learned behaviors. You can unlearn. Right. You can learn. Like, like, you just have to form new habits. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Totally awesome. And, and so, okay, so on the opposite side of the, of the influencers, right, because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I have a tribe, um, I, have, I have a group of people that, that are close to me and, and mm-hmm. got to be held accountable and all that, right? So right. on the flip side of that, who's, who's been your biggest supporters? Is it the same ah. people that are your influencers? <laughs> My biggest supporters, yeah. Like I have um, a friend like a soulmate, a soul sister. I have several of them now that I just keep meeting and we're instantly connected. But um, Alex Feli, you might have met her, I've communicated with her because she's my personal assistant as well. And she has this Alex? unique, ab- yes, Alex. Oh, she she's this- awesome. I know. She has this unique ability to let me, and I mentioned it before, but journal out loud. Journaling is a way of practicing your willpower. Did you know that? So it's a form of meditation. And so a lot of people will write down their thoughts. I am a person that literally needs to speak them because I believe your whole body will hear it. Okay. And so she lets me do that. And I figure out things. We come up with really cool ideas. Um, yeah. So there's, there's cool things coming up the, the pipeline. Because That's I get awesome. to journal out loud. But, yeah, I have another friend, Kim Miller. She's the one who said, uh, don't you think it's time to take care of you? You know, mm-hmm. and, and then I have another person, Sonia Dudley. I interviewed her, and we instantly connected, too. And she's the one that says, you're a diamond in the rough, and I wish you believed in yourself as much as I believe in you. And so we just – it was pretty much love at first sight, basically. And she's wrapped me under her wings. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I know. I'm like, boom. So, yeah, there – I do have – Great That's supporters awesome. as well. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So yeah. where are you? So where are you, where are you headed now? You got new adventures, businesses, family. I, like what's on the horizon? Oh my goodness! You know, um, some days I would say I don't know. That's literally because I have so many things going on. You know, you can get caught up in being overwhelmed. But you know, Sean, I really love helping others. That's my ultimate goal. So I'm working on a. Um, you know, working on dun, da, da, on a curriculum right. to be able to teach people how to tell their stories. I really That's think awesome. that. Yes. So I believe the greatest story in the whole world is the one where God sent his son to die on the cross for us. And and that's Uh the greatest story, right? But the second most important story in the world is your story. So Mm -hmm. your story and your story and your story, because we're, we're all about the comparison trap. And so I'm working on that and I am writing uh, several songs. My goal is to start recording. I actually have already started recording. So, um, you know, moving forward, there's a lot of other things on the horizon, but those two are my main ones right now. I homeschool, I speak, you know, and train and life coach, you know, and so, but I got two that I really want to make sure that I can, I really want it to be about others so that they can you prosper. You are crushing it. <laughs> You're crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, so refresh my memory. Where are you based at right now? I am based right outside of Pensacola, Florida, so the Panhandle, okay. you know, okay. those Pensacola. really cool white okay. sands. Yeah, it's pretty awesome here. Pensacola. Yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We are going to talk offline about storytelling, and uh, mm-hmm. I've got a lot of value to give you on that, so I'm okay. really, really excited. We'll, we'll rock cool. that thing. All uh, right, let's do it. So, yep. so um, if you had to go back, would you do anything different? Would you, would you change anything? Okay, so there were days where I, as I was healing and, you know, going through that emotional detox, because, you know, you have those rough days, even though you know you're doing the right thing. Would I do anything over? The only thing that I can find myself saying is I wish I knew what I know now when I was 20 Mm -hmm. years old, right? Yep. And and I I think that's my only thing like that, the urgency that I have. However, everything I've gone through in my 20s and 30s has made me who I am today. So I, I really look at it as in a perspective of I had to go through it. So I don't really want to change anything, even though there is a part of me that wishes I just knew at a younger age. That's all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On what I, I know now. I find it, oh, man, I find it so hard to 
to want to change anything because I fully believe that everything happened for a reason. And I mm-hmm. was a guy that said that God was the, the me little kid with a magnifying yep. glass burning ants. You know what Ugh. I mean? Like, oh, he's yep. picking on me. And he's, you know, I was that person. Like, I advocated oh. that, well, oh, yeah, he exists, you know, but he hates yeah. people. Like, he's really, you know. Mm. Um, but if I look back at every single thing that happened, it mm-hmm. literally one builds on top of another. I couldn't have done this without this. And then this yeah. happened to build to this. And then that, like every stage of my life and everything that has happened and I've learned and all is for a reason. Right. You know? it is. And I had to it do really one step to do the next step. And I couldn't be a speaker without going through basic training, but I couldn't go to basic training with a story because I hadn't gone through a story yet. And so if I yep. reverse engineer it and I go this, if I, nah. if I work myself backwards, <laughs> oh my mm-hmm. gosh, you can uh, literally see – how everything has fell into place. And so, I don't know, it's kind of hard. I think for me, it'd be relationships. Like, I've burned so many bridges and I've done mm. so many stupid things. I'm like, yeah. man, if I could just go back and not do that, or if I could go back and say, hey, man, I'm really sorry that I hurt you, or, you know, I don't know, put Band-Aids everywhere. <laughs> like, right. I don't know. But, I, I, yeah, it's hard for me to go back and change things because, mm-hmm. I mean, everything happens for a reason, you know? It's true. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm right there with yep. you. I'm going to say amen. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so what was the best resource that you've used so far in your transformation or in your journey? Okay, so you're going to laugh, but I'm going to okay. say YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is awesome. YouTube has been the best resource for me because, you know, starting out and, you know, not having anything to be able, you know, not having the finances to go and get um get the resources, YouTube, there's a lot of free things on YouTube, which allows you to, to um, get educated really, really fast. And so again, Jim Rohn, he got books on YouTube and John Maxwell, Mm -hmm. Darren Hardy, and all those things. I'm really going to say that, that um, my best resource outside of the Bible has been YouTube. I love it. I just, um, so I have a friend of mine who's a videographer and and Mm -hmm. he had put some, um, he put some videos on of me speaking and different things and made mm-hmm. me um, like highlight reels and promo videos and stuff. And yeah. and so I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. I don't do Twitter, uh, Insta, Insta chat, Snapagram, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't do any of that stuff. Um, yeah. But I just made myself a YouTube channel and, Good job. Um, and it's great. Cause I can just put whatever content I want and I yep. watch like the daily V with Gary Vaynerchuk. I, I mm-hmm. see all this stuff. I'm like, they're just constantly yeah. putting out content all the time. Uh-huh. And it's a free resource for you to put live content so people can feel your energy rather than yes. just reading it like on Facebook right. and, and connect with people. Millions of people are on YouTube. People YouTube all day long. Yes. You know? Yes. So I agree. Definitely so there that. You go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Boom. So. This is the <laughs> I love it. This, this is the moment of the show, right? Where we do a shameless plug. You can plug Don't friends, you. quotes, websites, Facebook products, your favorite movie, shout out, whatever you want. This is your moment to shine. I mean, you've been shining all episode, but really, <laughs> this is your moment to shine. So shameless Dude. plug. Go. Okay, my shameless plug is I love my family. My husband has been my number one supporter and has let me cry through and through and just really let me feel. And I'm really um, humbled by that and how he continues to cheer me on. I have another shameless plug of a friend in Tennessee. Her name is Nicole, and I just adore her so much. We're instant friends, and I just know we're going to be doing great things together soon. And like I said, Alex and Kim and Sonia – and I have a friend here, Carissa, and there's just so many more. I don't mean to leave anyone out, but you guys, my shameless plug is I believe that you need to take care of yourself, heart, mind, body, and soul. And in order to take care of yourself, it's not about the intentions because we all want to feel better, right? But how do we feel better? I believe that gut health is mental health. And I needed a product that I could, you know, as I'm coaching, I could just recommend to others because I believe we are lacking the nutrition in our food. And so I am going to shamelessly plug my Plexus business. I am now in the top 3% of the company. I'm a uh, gold wow. ambassador. And I know. I'm so excited. And um, just, I know. And, and they base their products on gut health. So they got this really cool probiotics that they have clinical studies done. That's the highest grade in the world right now. And I'm pretty stoked about it. But it helps get rid of the yeast and the toxins that are inside of you to help fulfill your intentions. Because we all want to feel better. So it's a gut health mm-hmm. product. It's a happiness product. There's a lot of believers, Christians in the company 
So my website will be shopmyplexus.com forward slash Laura Sprague. And that is my shameless plug because if you reach out to me and you purchase that, you will also get free coaching from me on how to help you be the best version of yourself. So boom. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's my shameless plug. I love it. Yeah. Top three. And you haven't been doing it that long. No, I, nope, not even a year. No. I know, right? Wow. I know. Killing it. I know. Oh, I'm, my gosh, I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So I want to plug something. I want to plug okay. something. Yeah. So you have an amazing podcast called Life mm-hmm. in Purple. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't seen or haven't heard or, or anything, um, you are rocking straight purple hair. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Thank you. So where does the purple come from? Where does the purple come from? Okay, I, I, so a couple years ago when I first knew I was going to just do something different, I went to this fancy place called Vivid Artistic Design in Pensacola, and I just went to my this hairdresser, I didn't even know her, and I said, I want something different. And she looked at me and she said, okay, sophisticated, I, I've had a lawyer with purple hair and black hair, I'm going to do that. And, and that's what she did. And so when it came time to, um, and just stuck, the purple hair did, but I, when it came time to name my podcast, my husband said, I really believe that purple should be in the name. And I'm like, why? I don't want purple in the name because that's not my identity. I just like purple hair. Well, I did a study on purple, and everyone needs to know this. Purple represents the color of royalty, success, the virtuous woman. It represents the color of spirituality and confidence and the colors of overcoming. It's the color to heal depression and anxiety, the color they use to help raise awareness for many things. And so I'm like, why not live a life? Wow. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> they use it to overcome. It's, it's, so it's spirituality and mm-hmm. overcoming and, mm-hmm. um, and royalty. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. The that makes sense why they have like, if, yeah, if you look at kings like back in the day, they always mm-hmm. picture them with like a red robe, whatever. A lot of them were purple. Yeah, the they are. The royalty. And so it's, yeah, it's the rarest color in nature, by the way, purple. Is it? It really is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't even realize that because I mean, I know all the fun facts right? that you I find found violets, out. Like, cool purple yeah. flowers. You know. Yeah. It's really cool. Huh. Mhm. That is. I'm mind blown right now. That's amazing. I know, right? That's so. That's what happened when I studied purple. The the hmm. definition of it. It was. I told myself the whole Napoleon Hill. You, you need to come up with a million dollar title. And I did that over oh, and over yeah. again. And, and that was the lip talk. Life in purple. So that's how that happened. Okay, yeah. I just yeah. I was going to ask you so word lip lip talk is for I because they don't yeah. know and I know, you know. Right. <laughs> right, right. question if you will. Um yeah. yeah, so lip talk is life in purple, lip. Um so so talk about your podcast, who comes on the show, who have you okay. had on the show, um what's, yes. the, what's the purpose of the show? The purpose of the show is to help um, others overcome depression and anxiety and let people know that it doesn't matter about their past, it's how they move forward. So I've had people um, all over the globe on the show, including Israel and Scotland and Australia, a couple of people in Australia, um, Canada, uh, United States. It's pretty awesome. Uh, some in England, too. I've had a TED Talk uh, person. Um, I've had people who are... Um, what are you, angel intuition readers, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I love just to get the yep. perspective of so many people, whether they're faith-based or not, because I believe, once again, everyone has a very, their story is important. And so um, it's where the success, successful can heal and conquer, you know. So um, that's what we do. It's just so that's awesome. we can relate. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. And, and- com. I was going to say, and go to LipTalkNation.com to learn more. That's awesome. So yeah. as we are going to close the show, mm-hmm. here's the call number, 657-383-1109. If you have any questions, 657-383-1109. So, Laura, as we wrap up, can you deliver your best nugget of knowledge that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone? Yes. I am super excited to tell you, like once again, I told you that uh, um, the brain does not have the ability to store motivation. All right, so here's the thing. Your body has the natural ability to to produce oxytocin. Oxytocin is the feel-good 
hormone and anything that makes you feel good going ah uh, will help you i'm serious like it helps you overcome th- things such as you're doing your grateful heart exercise and, and you're doing thankful did you know sean that you are producing oxytocin oxytocin is the hormone mm-hmm. that helps battle depression and sadness and so when people are sad what they can do is pull out their phone i did not make this up by the way they can google their favorite <laughs> baby animal google a baby google some pictures that make them feel ah uh, or they can look out a window look inside a window they can hold their arms up in a victory pose and what you're doing is also practicing your willpower so that's my nugget of wisdom for you all because there are simple things that you can do to help combat depression and anxiety so um oxytocin that's my thing man that's awesome yeah i love it i love everything about that <laughs> it's so true um yeah. i have a friend i have a friend named john broman and uh he's a speaker and he's the founder of the front row foundation where he takes terminally ill patients and um, brings them to any front row experience that they choose. He was mm-hmm. on the show um, a couple months ago, and his pose is the victory pose. You know, <sighs> arms up Love above it. your head, pointing to the sky. You know, um, that I mean, that's the pose. You know, it is basically what you're talking about. Boom! The victory yes, pose. It's, it's you're practicing your willpower at the same time, producing oxytocin. So there's a lot of things going yep. scientifically for that purpose. For, you know, why people do that. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So let's. So let's give a call to action. What should someone do today? Um, we already talked about, you know, checking you out, liptalknation.com. Um, should they plan a goal, set something, write in a journal? What is, what is your call to action that you tell people to do? Okay, so here's the thing. Whenever I've interviewed people, I've asked this question too, Sean, and I've come to the conclusion that what is the best plan of action is first you decide, we all know that, you decide to take action. But then what people forget to do is then gather their support system. So that's what I'm going to go and ask Mm. people to do is gather your support system because you cannot do it alone. You are not alone. And if you think you're alone, that is a lie. And so you ask yourself, who do you need to become to get where you want to go? So you decide and your support system and you'll be surprised at how many people will cheer you on because you cannot do it alone. And then they are the people who are going to then help you take action. That's my call to action. Gather your support system. I, I would also add um, something very intriguing that I did not know. Uh, yes, gather the support system because you, you never know um, who is battling and they'll right. battle with you. You know what I'm saying? Like well, I met absolutely. so many other people that, that, you know, based because of what I went through and, and suicide stuff, whatever, like I have – since I've began talking and really telling everybody about my stuff, you know, people come up to me, he's mm-hmm. like, dude, I was the same way. Like I was like, yes. like you're never alone. You, you nailed mm-hmm. it. Like you're not alone. You are not the only person who's ever battled what you have battled. Like boom, millions of people on earth, millions of people on earth, millions of people have come before us. Mm-hmm. You are not the only person. You are not, God is not upstairs saying, wow, I never thought about that one. Hmm, where'd that <laughs> right. come from? Like, right. No. Nobody has battled something that that no one has ever experienced. One other right. person, I guarantee you, in this world has experienced something like it, and they know yes. exactly how you're feeling. So I, I would say that when when you build your support system, also mm-hmm. find people who have overcame what you want to overcome because they can yeah. empathize with you. Yes, absolutely. Because your story will provide hope to someone else. Boom. Yeah, I know, right? Boom. So many mic drops in here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yes. I love it. Oh. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Absolutely. It's been an honor and a privilege to speak with you, and you are rocking it, and, uh, it, and you inspire me. <laughs> you inspire me. I think it's together. People need to be doing it together. Yeah. More people need to be cheering other people on. Awesome. So good job. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. So, with that, um, I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you've got to yep. go. I um, want to thank yeah. you so much for your time and being on the show, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Oh, thank you so much. You're awesome, Sean. <laughs> it was my pleasure. <laughs> take care. All right. Life Transformation Radio listeners. This is another episode with impactful people doing amazing things. If anything has resonated with you, shoot me a comment. Uh, We're on Facebook, Life Transformation Radio. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher. You can catch the links in about two to three days whenever it comes up. Uh, We are listened to in 21 
countries, the newest being Israel and Portugal. So welcome to Life Transformation Radio. And I want to leave you with one thing. Live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out your values that you hold deep in your heart. Find opportunities to inspire and make an impact in those around you. And I call that living your brand. And so join us next time on Life Transformation Radio every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, and every first and third Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night.